Welcome to the new video. This one's about uh, using a 3D scanner as a hobbyist. I think this hasn't been explained very well uh, so far in builds that I see on other YouTube channels. Uh, I'm using a Creality, the same ones that uh, produce the Ender 3D printer and uh, some other products. This is their Ender, uh, sorry, Creality CR Scan Ferret. It goes for about 250, 300 euros. There's also a pro version, but it's slightly different and I didn't opt for going that one, especially because this is my first scanner and I've ever, never, I had never used one before. Uh, this is a wired scanner, it goes to your laptop. There is also a way to connect it to your phone and do po post-processing later on a computer. But I haven't used that because I always uh, have my laptop with me. I have used this scanner for quite a few things in the past, especially on this build. Uh, if you haven't seen that, please check it out. Uh, I'm swapping a Volvo 5-cylinder engine with turbo into my MX-5. And uh, this video I'm going to be explaining how I scan and how I use that scan in, in this project. Like uh, the next step for me here is to 3D scan the bottom side of the engine in relation to the subframe. So this is the bottom subframe of an MX-5. Normally uh, it's way more closed. Uh, that's because I cut out a bit and I temporarily, for the scan actually, tape this up as if there were a pl plate here because I am going to be welding up uh, these openings uh, and you can see my engine is resting I put a piece of wood in between the steering rack and where the uh, oil sump would uh, fit up this engine is actually very interesting because the crankshaft uh, doesn't protrude uh, well maybe a little bit but not much out of the bottom of this half of this block and so I'll be 3D scanning this entirely uh, today and I will be designing my custom oil sump from there. One final thing to note is that I bought the scanner myself with my own money and I have been using it quite a bunch uh, on this project and other things. So this is using the scanner, uh, it's hooked up to my laptop and you can see uh, the model starting to take shape. Uh, you can see the red part is where I haven't been often and it doesn't, uh, hasn't collected many data points yet. And the green points that are currently highlighted is what it's scanning. On the left you have a bar which shows you um, if you're in the right range. If I go further away you can see it, says, it tells me to move closer. And if I move too close, it tells me to move further away from the object. You can also reflect on how many highlighted dots it's got at the, at the same time. Uh, and this way, if I um, move the scanner, it starts collecting data points more and more and more. And I can rotate it around, upside down, doesn't really matter. As long as it's close enough. Oh, there you saw it lost tracking. Now it lost tracking again. If I move it quickly, uh, it loses tracking and you have to go back to a point that's very easy to um, recognize for the scanner. For instance, now the front, it'll try to see, there it goes. It snapped back uh, because I started scanning the front here with the steering rack. Uh, the only downsides to uh, this type of scanner, well, any scanner to be honest, is that um, if you have a long object like a pipe, like this one, although this one uh, is helped by its surroundings. When you have a long metal pipe, it can't gather like one single point and know where it is. So it might stretch it out way more than it should be. And it will start running away on you. If you pause the scan right there, you can zoom out and see where you still need to uh, get more data for depending on your need, of course. You can kind of tell I missed this part of the engine. So I might scan that a little bit more, uh, although it's not entirely necessary. I would have liked to get into this ridge to see how much clearance I have for the oil sump that I'll be designing from this scan, uh, but it looks like I've got enough data right here as well, so I think I'm good. I have a second scan, I will show this in the SolidWorks later as well, a second scan of, the bottom of, of just the bottom of the engine, 
This way, overlapping those two scans, uh, it makes it quite easy to uh, see and understand. You don't have to have a huge scan at one huge scan to make it all work. After you've just scanned your model, you need to go through these two st these steps. You can also uh, click all of them at once, but I like to go through them manually. I just made uh, from the raw scan. I made the point cloud, which is the first step. You can kind of tell. Where, what what is not right now it's just a bunch of points so if you do end up zooming in you can see it's still a lot of floating points and if you want at this point and you have a stable pc you can remove uh, sections of this by selecting and deleting it and uh, when you are happy with your point cloud which in this case i am you can go uh, to the next step which is meshing it you have a bunch of settings in every step but i like the normal settings because they're pretty good so far so it's going to mesh it now which means it's going to take those points and connect them with lines and then triangles so the whole model is going to be made out of tiny tri triangles uh, which you do need a good pc or computer for this because it is quite heavy on the cpu side and the calculating because it's a lot of data the next step uh, after this one once it's finished uh, meshing is going to be uh, color grading which it does automatically it looks quite fancy but i end up never using it and then you download the 3D model. From there you can export it to SolidWorks. Before I go to SolidWorks, I really like to uh, clean up my 3D model using Mesh Mixer, which is a free program you can use. I just opened the OBJ file, which the Creality software produces. I normally start clicking the edit button and then transforming it. I like the world frame instead of the local frame so that the, this, uh, these axes don't move with the model and I can move it uh, like this and rotate it on the sides. I like it to get it in the ballpark first, I'm going to rotate it up and a bit like this first, then I'm going to line it up with the marks, not like quite roughly, doesn't, ha doesn't have to be perfect yet. Once you're done, you click accept and you have your uh, rotated model. And now we're gonna delete all of the garbage, which I don't need uh, using the select tool. You can see if you hover over the object, you will see large grayed out circle, but I am going to uh, line up my cut mark and click once, then click here and finish the section. Then it highlights just the parts that you just selected and I press the delete button to get rid of this part of the mesh. I do it on the other sides as well to get a clean model that's easy to work with later in CAD. Here's my 3D model all cleaned up. I removed a bunch of floating garbage and I line up the model just how I want it. And now I can export it to save my file as a mesh mixer file as well. So I can edit it later if I did want to go back to mesh mixer. So I'll save it right here. And now I can export it as well as an STL or an OBJ. I prefer the STL format because it makes your uh, SolidWorks part uh, one solid color. It doesn't import the color PNG that's related to uh, the 3D model. So there we go. I just saved it. Now we can head over to SolidWorks. This is what the STL looks like once you first open it in SOLIDWORKS. Rotating the 3D model right now is quite heavy on your computer. So what I like to do is go to view, then to display and to shade it without the lines uh, option. This way your model is now rendered without the all of the lines that make up every uh, triangle in the scan. And now it rotates quite easy and it's way easier on your computer. One more thing I like to do is give it a nice color. So you go over to the top of the tr tree. And then I choose a color from here. Uh, let's take green for this case. For You can save it as a SolidWorks 3D model. 
And now you can use it in uh, SOLIDWORKS assemblies and comparing it to other parts. So that's what I'll do next. So I've created a new uh, empty assembly and I will firstly import my oil sump scan. Uh, again, I'll click on the view, display and shaded option. And then I'll add my second scan, which is actually the full engine scan right here of the engine that I took when the engine was still out of the car. And I'll rotate that I'll arm the Z axis twice and place it somewhere near the second scan. So now you can see uh, if I do use my cursor on this, I can't actually move it. It's uh, quite tricky because these are uh, graphics. They're called graphics in SOLIDWORKS. So you have to click the main part, the top of the assembly tree and then click move component. And I like to use it um, along assembly XYZ. So it snaps to the right axis. And then you can use the your cur cursor and the uh, planes to get it seated perfectly uh, into the other scan. One thing to note is that you can see the green scan right here, which we just made, and the blue scan that I'm just moving into of the whole engine. On the left, you can see the blue one protrude, and on the right, you can see the green one protrude, which means the engine is, uh, the full engine scan is rotated clockwise just a little bit too much. So uh, to change that, I like to go and select my component, then go to rotate component, then along X, Y, and Z, and rotate my view. And you can see here at the bottom left, there is a X, Y, Z triangle. So you can use uh, that and see that it has to be rotated along the Z axis. And I'll start in very small increments and just click apply. And you can kind of see the green start to change here in the middle. And here you can see it uh, fade in right there. So I'll go a little bit further and I probably end up having the blue part of the engine uh, be slightly higher and I'll move it down a bit more. you can see that I have uh, it's basically clipping perfectly into itself going back into my first scan uh, you can kind of tell that I'm missing some data here that's very important to me this is the steering rack and it is uh, only scanned on uh, the easiest to see parts and if you rotate the 3d model you can kind of tell I'm missing this part and it's very uh, important for me to get the dimension from the top of the steering rack to the oil sump uh, face. To add data to this scan we're going to make a new uh, sketch uh, that's going to uh, remake a part of this model. So what I like to do is uh, choose a plane that intersects where I want to make my sketch and then I'll use this section view button at the top and uh, move my view into a spot that I uh, want. Uh, this is about right so i'll uh, section view it right there now you can kind of tell my whole 3d model is cut in half this is of course temporary and just used for viewing the actual model hasn't been changed i'll go to the right plane again and start a new sketch right here so in this sketch you can see this is the steering rack that i'm going to be rebuilding and i will use this three point perimeter circle and I'll just get uh, some known data points like this. And if you've uh, now we've we can see the missing part right here. And we'll go to boss extrude and make it so it extrudes a, a cylinder. I'll make it a bit larger. This is just for demonstration purposes. Now you can see the missing part at the bottom of the steering rack, which uh, wasn't there before, but using some simple sketches, we've now uh, added this to the 3D model. So I'll undo the section view, and when I go back to my assembly, this is the assembly now. You can now see 
the actual dimension of the bottom of the steering rack to my oil sump. This is now useful and I can start making my uh, oil sump using these two scans in an assembly. One thing to note is that I bought this scanner myself with my own money. This hasn't been sponsored. And if you want to find any scans, if you don't want to buy this and you do want to use the scans that I have used, there is a link in the description or right up here for my uh, Cults 3D page, which is a page where you can buy or download my uh, 3D models. Like um, currently I have got the B5244 T3 engine. Uh, up there and a 3D scan of my Yamaha R6 and a bunch of different scans. One very useful scan I've got is the whole engine bay of this car uh, without the engine in it and the trans tunnel. So if you ever want to engine swap an MX-5 or see if it's possible, uh, you could uh, 3D uh, scan your own engine or get a model of an engine and plop it into the model of the uh, chassis that I've got on my GOTS page. So overall, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.